Hello, this is a tutorial on how to create a rubric and link the rubric to the particular assignment so that you and the student have access to it in the Grade Center. So we're in a Blackboard shell. This is the particular assignment here. It's an assignment link assignment, a corporate tax return that we're going to create the rubric for. So over in your menu on the side, down into Course Management Area, you want to go into Course Tools. You want to scroll down till you find rubrics. Click on rubrics. At this point, you don't have any rubrics listed here. If you had already built rubrics, they would be listed in this spot. So we're going to click create rubric. You need to give the rubric a name. You can put something in the description area. No one will be able to see it. This is just an information area for the instructor that creates the rubric. Students don't see it at all, so you don't have to do anything. So in your number area number two, the rubric detail, you have levels of achievement across the top. And you can have this in any order. They have it from novice to competent to proficient. We'll be changing that. And then going top to bottom, we have the criteria. So you have the ability to add columns and add rows, and I'm going to do that in a second. You also have the ability to have the scoring work with points, point range, percent, or percent range, or no points at all. I'm actually going to do a point range. This is most common type of rubric that we generally make anyway. So I'm going to add a row and I'm going to add a column. Now notice that you have the point ranges laid out here. You need to determine what the points are going to be. Now it is important for you to go from small to big. So let's assume that the most points that I can get in a particular category is 20. So in this case what I'm going to do is make some changes here. I'm going to call this excellent. All I'm doing is going to the chevron. I'm going to call this above average. You can change this to anything that works for you. I'm going to call this average. Actually, probably say below average. And call this needs and I'll call it poor. Now I'm going to call it needs improvement. Because what you have to do is notice how we're kind of cut off here. You've got to actually use your arrows to go over to find the save key. So that's why I'm going to do needs improvement because I've done that before and I know that you run out of space. Okay, so um, again, you can call these anything you want. I've made it from good over here to bad. You can have it the other way. But you do not want to, although you can edit a rubric, once you establish your rows and your columns, you don't want to kind of like change the layout. So my, my point there is, is you don't want to have the levels of achievement go from good to bad. And then you decide you're going to add a fifth column, a fifth level of achievement in this case. And what would happen at that point is maybe you want to put it somewhere in the middle. Say you want to put something here, but you'd like to change the order so that it goes from poor to good that won't work. The one column that you've added will be different from all the rest, so you need to lay this out ahead of time. I could have something different in here the same way, just hit the chevron. I can either delete this row or I can hit the edit key and, and change the name, but for right now, for purposes of what we have here, I'm actually good. So I'm going to leave that alone. We're going to start looking at the points. So again, you have to have the points in these ranges go from small to big. So if I have 20 as the maximum, I want 20 right here. So this might be something like 19 to 20. And then if you tab over three times, you'll move over to the next one. And maybe this one is 16 to 18. And 14 to 15. And maybe this one is, whoops, 0 to 13. Okay, so, so I now have my ranges. So I have to fill in um, all of those points. So I'm going to pause and do that now. Okay, so we have all of the points in all of the columns as far as the ranges go. I've also added a row 
because the particular assignment that I'm creating the rubric on totals 100 points. And so if I had four rows of 20, that was only 80, so I added a fifth row. And again, you can change the name of the rows going across as well, too, which you can see I've done here, complete the 1120 corporate tax form. So at this particular point, what you need to do is you need to fill the words in in the individual columns. So you can have this stuff already ready and just copy and paste from a rubric that you've built or from a Word document. And then make whatever changes you have to uh, make. And so forth. Okay, so now I have completed all of the words that I need to put in in all the appropriate boxes. And understand that you do have a spell check. This little ABC icon right here is a spell check. So if you're typing um, in there, as opposed to copying and pasted where you've already done the spell check, you have that particular option. Okay, so when you are all done, when you are complete, now I didn't finish filling all the words in down here, but that's okay. You don't have to put anything in there. You can just put the score in but it gives the students better feedback if you actually put the uh, some language in there because that does show up for the student to see. So if you come all the way down to the bottom, you're going to click Submit. So then you'll get this uh, Success Rubric Created, Corporate Tax Rubric, and there you see it right here. So now we've just successfully created a rubric. What we have to do now is we have to link the rubric with the area of the gradebook that that particular assignment is going to be submitted. So we go back to our control panel and we go to Grade Center. We go to Full Grade Center and then we're going to want to find that particular item. Tax Return Corporate. This is the column for the assignment link submission. So you're going to hit this drop down chevron here you're going to go to edit, edit column information. Edit column information, click on that. And then you're going to scroll down here to the bottom. There's your 100 points for the assignment. You're going to go to this button here that says add rubric. You have some choices here. Now although it says create new rubric here and it would give us the same form that we just worked on, we haven't found this to be working. So it's best to create your rubric from the course tools area. So now we're going to click Select Rubric, and it shows a list of rubrics that are available. In this particular case, we only have the one that we just built, so we're going to just put a check mark into that box, and we're going to hit Submit. Click OK to assign the rubric's maximum points as the points possible. So when you build your rubric, if you have the rubric set up with the maximum amount of points as you have when you built the assignment link, those points are the same. You can just click OK. That's the way you would want to do it. So let's just uh, see what we have down here. It's added the rubric. Here's the date it was last edited because you do have the ability to edit that. It is used for grading. That's the default. This little uh, red X here allows you to delete it. You can edit it as the little uh, pencil here, and this piece of paper allows you to view it in case you wanted to see, see it before you launched it. There is uh, one important thing, though, that you, you should do, and that is to go all the way over here to the right. The default, for some reason, where it says show rubric to the student, it defaults to no. So if you hover your mouse over that button, you have the ability to change it, which I recommend you do. Yes, with rubric scores. That top item there, you're just going to click that, and now you're good. You see that it's gone to a green uh, check mark there. This particular point, you can leave everything else alone and go down and hit Submit. And you have now attached the tax return, uh, the corporate tax return assignment link column with the rubric that you created to grade that item. So if I actually go in here to look at this, uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an assignment in there so we can see it since there isn't anything submitted. Give me a second. Okay, I'm now logged in as B student, and you see I've found this assignment link in the Seminar 1 folder, the Week 1, 100 points, 
submit your completed tax return. Now this is where the student would go and browse to their computer and actually get the item that they want to link up. But here's, because we set it up this way, they have the ability to view the rubric beforehand. So they can actually pull this rubric up and see what it looks like and see how the scoring is actually going to happen um, you know, and go forward. So they have that ability. So what I'm going to do at this particular point is I'm just going to find something. Let's pop that in there. I don't know what that is. And hit submit. So we have something in there. And I will pause and go back in. Okay, I'm back in as a faculty now. So I'm going to go to the Grade Center. And we'll find our, there's our tax return over here that was submitted. View grade details. View attempt. And here's the assignment that was submitted over here to the side like it always is. We have 13 pages and you can do your comments and all that. You also have the ability here to type some feedback in there and that kind of thing. Here's your rubric. Here's your score possibilities out of 100. Here's that rubric. So if I click on the rubric, it pulls that rubric up for me. So I can kind of keep this over to the side. I can be reading. I can go back and forth between the two. And then all I have to do is put my scoring in. I can put some feedback if I'd like to at this particular point. Again, there's spell check for that. And let's go here. Now, what I want to point out to you is that it splits the difference when you pop a score up. Remember, the choice here was 19 to 20. It defaults it to 19 and a half, but you got to go to this little arrow to determine if I wanted to give the individual 20 points there. 17 is the middle. Maybe that's what I want to give them. Maybe I only want to give them 16, right, based on the number of errors or what have you. Okay. So I do that all the way across the board. The score is there. I make sure I put scores in. The current total at this point is 84 and a half out of 100. I do have the ability, maybe if for whatever reason there's adjusted points, there's some extra credit, what have you. If not, um, that's our raw total. I can put some feedback in this spot if I want, just like any of the other boxes. And I'll come out down here to the bottom and click Save. It has the score in, and the rubric now is identified. So when the student looks at it, the student is going to see any comments that were placed in along with the score on the rubric. I hit Submit. And we have now turned in this assignment.